morning. Today we're going to talk about my likes, dislikes, and my thoughts on this 2021 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. So stay tuned guys. Welcome to Rhino Exploration. My name is Zach, and today is going to be a fun day, guys. I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but I had to wait for the weather to kind of cooperate here with me a little bit. As you can tell, it is still springtime here in Colorado, and it is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, it is only like about 65 degrees right now, where the rest of the West is starting to hit the hundreds. We're still in the 60s, so I'm absolutely loving the fact that the weather is cooperating right now. I thought I'd take today and just kind of discuss with you my thoughts on my Jeep, what I like, what I dislike, and just my overall opinion of the Jeep because I haven't done that yet. I've shared with you guys what I've done to the Jeep, things that I've updated, all that, and the adventures we've gone on, but I've never truly given you guys my thoughts and opinions on the Jeep. Now don't get me wrong, this Jeep is one of my dream vehicles. I've always wanted to have one of the newer Jeeps. And when I bought this two and a half years ago, yes, it's been almost three years since I bought this Jeep and it has less than 30,000 miles on it. And that's mostly because of island life. <laughs> you live on an island that's, you know, you don't even get a hundred miles going all the way around the island. It's only about 98. So you didn't get a whole lot. Now that we're here in the mainland, it's getting more. But since having this Jeep for two and a half years, I do have some things that I love about it, some things I really dislike about it, and you know, an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion, and so do I. So that's what we're gonna be taking care of today, guys. All right, so as you guys know, this is my 2021 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, and it has the two liter turbo engine in it. And I got this at the end of 2020, when my old car decided to have an issue with this transmission, and I went ahead and bought what I wanted, and it was a Jeep. And since having this, you know, there it's been mostly good. I haven't had a whole lot of issues mechanically with the Jeep. We did have one incident where one of the fuses, uh, one of the main fuses went bad on it, and it lit up the dashboard, and I lost lockers and everything else. But it was a really easy fix. Uh, it was just one of those, you know, block fuses that you can't see in, and when I took it in there, it was, in the shop for like three hours and all it did was boop. Otherwise, since then, I've had no mechanical issues with my Jeep and I absolutely am happy that I've had no issues. Now, I do take care of my Jeep, I do regular services, maintenance, and I just try and keep it in the best working order because like any vehicle, if you take care of it, it will last for a long time. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, why did you get the two liter turbo? At the time, at the end of 2020, I was still in Hawaii, Hawaii, you know, you kind of get what you get when you're there, and there were not a whole lot of Jeeps on island, and most of the Jeeps that were there were, one, automatic, because I wanted a manual, but automatic, and two, all Jeeps that were on island at the two dealers that <laughs> sell Jeeps were all two-liter turbos. So I don't know if it's just one of those things where Jeep just didn't have a bunch of the 3.6 liters, out but that is what was all on island and the 392 had not come out yet the 392 came out like three months later which i guarantee you if the 392 would have been out i would have bought it then on island and it probably you know lived a more dangerous <laughs> life with the 392 but that's okay i absolutely love the engine the engine works great and you know comparative wise to the other models of the Wrangler, like the other engines that are out there, it's not too bad. Now, I do have it written down uh, because, once again, lots of numbers, and as you guys have learned already by now, give me a bunch of random numbers, and I'll remember them. Give me facts about something that you want me to remember. I'm probably not going to. So, 
my engine has 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque which is awesome now being up here in altitude it's probably a little less just because that turbo is not getting all the oxygen that it needs to perform at its you know peak because honestly I live at 6,000 feet and when I go exploring here in Colorado I'm normally higher than that very easily in a short amount of time but it's okay it has worked flawlessly and I've had zero issues now compare that to the 3.6 liter the 3.6 liter has 285 horsepower it has 15 more horsepower than this but it only has 260 pound-feet of torque which means I have more and that's mostly due to the turbo but if you compare it to the 3.0 diesel the eco diesel that you know Jeep has it has 260 horsepower which is 10 less than me and 442 pound-feet of torque which blows me and the 3.6 liter out of the water just because it is a diesel now we cannot it's a laugh if we compare this to the almighty 392 which has 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque and that's without tuning it that's out of the factory which yeah that you know big v8 little four cylinder <laughs> It's kind of comical, right? But that's what it is. And, you know, it is what it is. And right now, I love my engine. Maybe one day, way down the road, when we get tons of miles on it, maybe we'll change it out. But for now, I'm loving it, and I have less than 30,000 miles, which, I'm going to be honest with you, that gap's closing really quickly by the end of the year. This thing will probably have about 40,000, if not 50,000 miles on it, just because being back on the mainland of the United States, I am going all sorts of places and absolutely loving it. And putting the miles on it, you know, that's what it's meant for. It's meant for adventure. We're not mall crawling this. I'm not driving this around the city all the time. This is literally being used what Jeep designed it for, which is to hit the trail, go off road and explore. And because we're overlanders, I load this thing down and we go. And I have had an absolute blast with this Jeep. So though I love my Jeep, now don't get me wrong, out the gate, I'm gonna give you kind of my opinion. I love my Jeep. This Jeep is not going anywhere. This is truly my first brand new vehicle. This was my first new car I bought. Anything that I've owned before that was used or was my parents and then handed down and it had a ton of miles. Like my first car had, legitly when I got it, 280,000 miles. When I was done with it, it had 330,000. And then my truck after that had 230,000 miles and I, it died finally at about 350,000 miles. So I've always had high mileage vehicles until, until I was able to buy my own cars, which had less than 100,000, but normally had some kind of issues later on down the road, just because you don't know how the owner before them took care of them. So when my old car died, I bought this brand new and I have, you know I've not looked back since this is what I wanted and honestly guys I cannot complain I love having my Jeep and that is just my opinion I love Jeeps I I'm not a big Bronco fan they look pretty and they are super capable but I personally wouldn't want to own one just because I'm not a Ford fan I like Ford trucks I do I don't care for Ford cars and I really you know to me the Bronco and I'm gonna make a lot of people mad by saying it but literally the Bronco is nothing more than a Wrangler just kinda of squashed and widened honestly put them next to each other the similarities are way too close uh, but that's just how it is I, I don't really care for it like I said it's pretty and if you have one awesome they are capable I've seen them do things on the trails and that's great uh, I'm not a fan of Toyota I, I don't like the 4Runner straight up i think it needs a revamp because it's over 10 years old and i didn't like it from the beginning i like the old 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 forerunners those are great and i'm not a tacoma person as a mid-size truck it looks perfect i just the thing that gets me with toyota is i don't like the driver's seat in the toyota i don't like my knees i don't like the feeling of being in a car because that's what it is it's just basically a car concept turned into a four-wheel drive I do not like the seating positions on how you sit inside them I just I feel cramped all the time when I'm in them it's just how it is and I've driven a Tacoma I've driven a forerunner I've driven a Bronco I just I just don't like them that's just how it is I just 
not a fan of them at all. And when I went and got this thing, I could have got a full-size vehicle, a big full-size truck, but I really didn't want one because honestly, at the time, I lived on an island. There was no need for a full-size truck. Honestly, there was no need for a big four-wheel drive either, but I wanted it, <laughs> so I bought it. And I'm very happy with it. But in the grand scheme of things, I love my Jeep. It is, it is basically my baby. Besides the D100, which is my ultimate baby, this is my baby, and I take care of it as best I can. Now, let's get into some of the things that I like, and then we'll get to the flip side of things. And there's quite a few things that I dislike. Because, you know, though I love my Jeep, there are certain things that either Jeep did than a design that I didn't care for, or stuff that over time just hasn't gone well. So let's start with what I like. I love the way the front of this Jeep looks. I love the seven slotted grille. I love the headlights. I love the way the JLs look. My first love for a Wrangler was the old TJs. I thought they looked amazing and then you get into the CJs and stuff like that. Loved them. I did not like the YJs and honestly I did not care for the JKs and the reason I did not like the JKs was the front. The front even to this day I just don't like the front of the of the JKs. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the blinker light or what, but there's something about the front of the JKs that just, I don't know, it kind of turns me off from liking the Jeep, that that era of Jeep. Like people have done some amazing things and they look great from a side profile and from the rear, but from the front, I hate the JKs. I just don't like the way they look. I don't know why, but I love this front. It looks super clean, it looks sleek. And then the factory steel bumper that comes out, as you guys know, I took off the ends and I just love that stubby look. It looks aggressive and you know, it works great. And I'm, I love the fact that I could put a winch into it and didn't have to do much but buy a winch plate for it. And I just, I love the way the front looks. And I love the fact that they fix these latches from the TJ and the JK and actually made them an actual hinge, la a hinge latch with the part that holds it down so you don't have to buy aftermarket latches because these actually work. The other thing I like, and was one of the other things I didn't like about the JK, are these fenders. Now I know they're very similar, but I love the fact the lights are integrated into these fenders and I just kind of like the way these fenders look. They're kind of up out of the way a bit and just the way they go. It is a great look on the Jeep, and it's just one of those things that drew me into the JL when they first came out in 2018, that I just kind of sat there and went, I want that model of Jeep, like that is what I want, and honestly guys, I can't say anything more about the front than I just love the way that this looks in the front. And then you have the side profile of the Jeep, and when they first came out with the four door, it, it took a while for it to grow on me with the JK, because when they first came out with the four door, I was like, that that's can't be a Wrangler, don't call it that. It just doesn't look right because I was so used to the TJs and the CJs where it was just all two-door. I'm ignoring the YJs just because I loved parts of the YJs but them square Barbie headlights I just can't do. And then as it grew on me and as I started getting into overlanding and enjoying it, I just realized that the four-door was awesome. <laughs> it just grew on me. And I love the way the JL did this, like what they did with these models. Uh, I do miss the button that they have on the JK. The JK, I did like the little button and it opens, but these handles are really nice and they're super strong. And just the way the sides look, guys, I just really like the way they did this on the Jeep. And to me, it's just, it's one of those things that just stands out. You see it in photos, you see it in videos all the time, and just concepts, the side profile of the Jeep you know, stock looks great. And then when you start upgrading things and changing things, it just gets beefier and more aggressive looking. I don't know, the side profile of the Jeep is just one of my favorites. You know, you get it up on the mountain like we did a couple weeks ago and you just, that side profile of the Jeep looking out over the mountains because you're on top of one is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning and I just, I don't know, I'm in love. You know, I've already told you, I love my Jeep. I love that side profile. So some things that I like about the back of the Jeep. One, I do love the factory sound system. I do have the Alpine 
sound system in the Jeep with the subwoofer back here and that sound system sounds amazing. The other thing I like is that Jeep did provide me with these little hooks right up in here that I can strap things down with. I strap things down all the time with these hooks. Now when we put our platform system in, these will disappear and we'll have other hooks. And then their little tiny cubby that's right here. Which if I point you down, there it is. This little cubby right here. Now I have my grocery bags and stuff like that in here because I'm in town. But otherwise I can store all sorts of things in here and this will be a great compartment for stuff once I build my platform system. Now, if we move inside the Jeep here, I think it is a super comfortable place to sit. Now, I know some people, they dislike the Wranglers. They think they're a bit rough. They're, you know, you drive them. It's a rough kind of feeling ride. And honestly, I don't get that feeling. And that's just, you know, it may just be me, but in its stock form without any suspension changes, the Jeep rides very smoothly. Now, don't get me wrong, yes, it's a little rough if you hit like a pothole or you get on some of those washboard roads. Th then it feels a little rough, don't get me wrong, but it is a pretty comfortable ride and I love sitting here in the driver's seat. It is just comfortable, the steering wheel is comfortable. I like the way the gauges are laid out. It's really easy to just be driving and tune whatever I want or turn on the AC. I really like how the inside is done. I like the touch screen, the dials. I really like the round dials. I just, I really like how the inside has been done. And it is just, to me, it's functional. I sit in here and everything just kind of feels functional. I like my cockpit and it doesn't feel small in here. Before when you used to get in Jeeps, especially the two doors, it just kind of feels cramped because the front is all you got and then there wasn't much of a back. And then having the back, I don't know, to me it just kind of opens it up and makes it feel good inside of here. And then the back of the Jeep, which I'll show you guys here in a second, but I'm just gonna talk to you here. I like the back of the Jeep. There is quite a bit of room with the four doors and it is awesome. I really enjoy having all that extra space. Now you guys know that back when we went to Easter Jeep Safari, I removed the back seats and honestly I haven't put them back. Now I have the ability to put them back, but I don't plan to, and I do plan to. It's one of our projects is we're going to build a platform system in the back of the Jeep so we can you know, store things better and hard mount certain things that permanently live in the Jeep that live in my tote box. I love the, how much space I get in the back. Now, don't get me wrong, you compare it to a full-size rig or to certain other SUVs, it's not a lot, especially because Jeeps are narrower. It's not a lot. But for the purposes of what I do, it is great. Now when I pack everything in here for overlanding at the moment, just because of how my setup is, it's a bit cramped in here. Once we build my platform system and the shelves and things like that, it's going to get a little easier. And then eventually when we get rooftop tent, that's gonna eliminate more crap in here that honestly gives me more space that I don't need to put anything else in. It just gives me more space in the Jeep. If I had to store things, I could. Now, let's get on to what I dislike about my Jeep. On to the dislikes. Now, I'm gonna say, bear with me, there is a person flying a plane overhead and he's, he's, he's having a good old time, but he is cutting the engine in and out. So you may hear a plane in the background flying around. But let's get on to some of the things I dislike and let's start, let's zoom that in with this, I hate, 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 hate these hood louvers. I really think this is the dumbest thing Jeep could have done to the hood. Now on the 392, the Mojave edition of the Gladiator, I'm gonna turn you just a hair. They have that nice little inlet here where air goes in but water doesn't come in due to their technology. I think these are dumb. And the most, and the reason why is because really they, Stock ones are not functional whatsoever. They have this tiny little hole, and if you remove the hood liner on the inside of the Jeep, like I did, because it got really disgusting in Hawaii, it just lets water into the engine bay. And then when I moved from Hawaii to here, as you guys know, I struggled with why water and ice was always getting into the engine bay, and it turned out that the original hood louvers 
the little seal on the bottom of them went bad. And so it was just letting fluids in all the time. So I had to replace them. And since I replaced them with these SNB, you know, air intake hood louvers, I have added no water in it, which is great, but I think that is just such a design flaw on these Jeeps. I get it was to look aggressive and to give it kind of a beefier look. I think it is just stupid. You should have just left it a nice flat hood like you do on the models that aren't the Rubicon, and it would have been just fine. It doesn't let any air in. These let air in. If I undo these little latch or these little caps, it'll let all the air in in the world into the engine bay, which is great sometimes on the trail. It helps let the heat out, but otherwise I really hate, hate those hood loopers. I think they are stupid. I really do. Now, if we were to go into the engine bay here, now into the engine bay. Honestly, the engine bay is not too bad. Now, I know mine's a little dirty at the moment. I haven't cleaned it from our last trip that we just got home from. But, you know, the engine bay isn't too bad. But there are certain things with about the engine bay that is just a little annoying. Honestly, there's not a lot of space to mount things. As you guys know, I have my ox beam switch mounted here. I have its, you know, circuits over there. Yes, I could have mounted them there, but the cords wouldn't have reached all the way over there for, you know, the passenger side. And it's just a little cramped in here. Like, I get this is a four-cylinder with a turbo, but it is just, they crammed a lot of stuff into the small area. And honestly, it's, it, it becomes a little frustrating when you're trying to install certain things and stuff has to be mounted under the hood. Just your space is very limited. But you can figure it out, you just have to kind of think about it. Now, the number one thing I really dislike about my Jeep in particular, and it is the only real component under the hood I dislike. You know, yes, the space is cramped and, you know, it's a little frustrating, but I don't, it's not, it's not a dislike. But what I dislike about in here is this air intake setup. I, I, I really hate this air intake setup. These hoses, this hose here if you undo this box and move it it doesn't really one like to move but two you do it and one thing I discovered was my hoses when I first started messing under the Jeep were not connected properly from the dealer or the factory it was kind of very loose so it popped off now no big deal you put them back on tighten it down properly and it'll stay on but these are a pain in the rear to get back on. Like they do not like going back over the area that they're supposed to, no matter how much you loosen the metal strap that holds them down. It just, on here, it was, it took me 30 minutes to get these back on because it would not go on. Like the hose is smaller than the opening and whether they did that on purpose to try and give it a snug fit, it is a pain in the rear to get these on if it falls off and it is, yeah, it has caused me some frustration. Uh, it is one thing I really, really dislike about under the hood, and it is about the only thing that I dislike about under the hood. The other thing is when I first got this Jeep, over half the fuses were like loose. I had to push them in, which apparently is like a common, you know, jail issue where you get it. If you don't push in all the fuses, most of the time from the factory, they just didn't push them in all the way. Otherwise, that's the only real complaint I have about under the hood. It's just this air intake system. It is just poor. It's just, you know, plastic that was poorly put on either by the factory or if the dealer messed with it, they just didn't hook it back up correctly. And my dislikes continue into the Jeep. <laughs> there are, though I love sitting in here and it's a really comfortable place, there are a few things I truly dislike about the inside of my Jeep. Now to start, um, these latches up here, you just heard me close it again, these latches that hold on the Freedom Tops, for whatever reason, they are as tight as they get, but these two right here in the middle constantly, constantly come loose when I'm off-roading, and they're as tight as they can get them. I, like, I have tried tightening these more to try and keep it closed down, and it is as tight as it gets and it constantly comes loose 
when I am off-roading or if the Jeep is shaking, it just rattles itself loose and then all of a sudden you start hearing air noise. Like, what is that noise? And here it's this has come loose, which is quite annoying. I, I It's very frustrating that that is tight and that is just coming loose. The rest of them don't. It's just these two middle ones constantly are coming loose and it is very, very annoying. The other thing that I dislike about the inside of the Jeep is these window switches. Like they're great that they're in the middle and not on the doors, but I know it's a thing with most people that have a JL, but I hate the fact that you can press it and it automatically will roll down the window. But you have to hold it to roll it up. I get it just takes a few more seconds to sit there and hold it, but it would be really convenient if I could just pull all of them and it rolls them up automatically. I personally uh, love having my windows down. In all weather, I love having the windows down unless it's cold. And to be able just to pull those buttons and it rolls them up automatically would have been nice. However, it doesn't, but it would have been nice. The other thing I hate about, well, I associate it with the inside of the Jeep, but it's a function within the programming is the fact that you cannot have this door open unless you disconnect the wiring and put it in drive. It automatically locks up the Jeep and tells you it can't go anywhere. And it is stupid annoying. Absolutely stupid annoying. And I cannot stand that feature. Like what the hell, why can't I just roll the Jeep forward a little bit if I need to with the door open? It makes it easier to see without the Jeep freaking out. I'm sorry, I get it's a safety feature, but if people are that stupid, then let them get hurt. Honestly, just let them get hurt. The world today, sometimes I question a lot. Now, another thing I dislike about the interior of my Jeep, and I don't know if it's just me, or if other people have had this issue, but when you open the glove box, it, it just falls. This tiny little piece here, fits into a piece of plastic right back here that's supposed to be like a mechanism that helps control its descent and everything else, which if I put it in there, it's great. But 90% of the time, it automatically falls out, as you saw right there, and then the whole glove box just falls when you're trying to open things or get into it. And it is very frustrating like it gets I get super irritated by the fact that I open this I have to hold this and use my other hand because I can't just let it fall and it catches because it just automatically falls down and like I said I don't know if it's just me is something broken there I have no idea I barely ever opened the glove box but that is a feature that or something that is developed over time and pretty much has been going from the start that is super frustrating and there's nothing in there but some paper so I don't know, but that is the other thing about the interior of this Jeep that I absolutely dislike. Okay, now on to, I would call it the area that frustrates me the most about the Jeep. And most of the other things I've mentioned are, you know, I dislike it because it's frustrating or I dislike it because it's a really big inconvenience and a lot of the time it's just a pain in the butt because it's just, things that have gone wrong minus the hood lures I hate that that I have a strong hatred for those but the other thing I really really dislike and it has become prevalent over time is aspects of the back of the Jeep now if we open this up you got your typical tailgate which is great it works perfectly fine have no issues with it and the table on here awesome now my frustration with the back of the Jeep begins and kind of ends with this window. And let me kind of bring you closer and tell you why. All right, so to start, this window, as you can tell, has no kind of frame up around it. It's just glass. And the glass, as you can see here, isn't very thick. Now, I've already had somebody in Hawaii smash my rear window in to try and gain nothing. They didn't steal anything. They just smashed my rear window in. And 
you know, it's safety glass, it gets everywhere, but all these components and everything else just kind of that are attached, if we open it up, and if I poke you up, you'll see it, there you go. You know, the windshield wiper, the fluid line, my lights weren't there at the time, but everything else just dangled, including these which are connected straight to the glass. It just dangled. And the other frustrating aspect about it is, if anything gets caught up in here, there's no frame to help protect you, or the protector glass, there's no frame. And if you put pressure on this, I've seen it happen to other people, it instantly breaks into a thousand little pieces because it's safety glass. And the reason is, is because it just gets glass contact and this glass is not strong at all. Literally, it is super flimsy. And if anything hits it, or you close it into something, or something gets caught up here and you don't notice it, it just breaks, instantly breaks, and it is frustrating. And I really do not like the fact that this glass is super thin. The whole lifting glass part, love it. But they could have put a frame around this that give this some more enforcement, especially or some more reinforcement, especially if they're gonna leave it this thin of glass, and they attach everything to it. Which, to me, is just, I've seen it happen because someone broke my own glass. It just, everything dangles, and then the people that have to replace your glass, the people that did mine, did an amazing job back in Hawaii, but he told me he had to struggle to get all the old glass off of it so he could re-stick it all to everything. And it's just, it's annoying, honestly. It is very annoying. And this glass isn't flat. Like you open this, there is a slight arch in the glass. So if you try to mount things this way, kind of like how this light is, there's a bit of a gap between right and here because the glass just bows a little bit. The other thing on this glass, let's move you back down here, that I don't like is this weather seal. It is super damn thin and honestly it doesn't keep dust or water really out of the back of my Jeep. It gets dusty back here all the time and it's not because I opened the door, it's because the dust is getting through because these little things here rip very easy on this side of the Jeep, which I don't know if you can see, but it is already ripped, it has gotten nasty. So either this needs to be replaced or I'm gonna have to add more weather stripping to here or onto the back tailgate of the Jeep to help just reinforce that not coming through. Just like here, if I show you down further, here, this weather stripping has already uh, come off of the Jeep. Like the stickiness or whatever was in here has definitely come off no matter how much I stick it back. So I have to get new glue to stick this back on because that's just come loose. Which is, which in on itself is frustrating. This Jeep is two and a half years old. Shouldn't be having these issues. So those are my likes and dislikes, guys. Like, honestly, I though it seems like I had a lot of negative things to say, honestly, there's only two real things that I hate on this Jeep, which is one, this rear window and those damn hood louvers on the front. Otherwise, the rest of the things that I dislike is more because it's just an inconvenience, except for maybe the glove the part, the glove box aspect where it just falls out. Like I said, I don't know if other people have had it. If, if you know other people that have had that issue or if you've had it, leave a comment in the description below. I'd like to know because honestly, some of the other people I've met with the JLs haven't had that issue, but I don't, like I said, I don't know if something broke and I have no idea about it or what, but it just it kind of happened. And then my likes, you know, I, I, I kind of left it in a general overview of my likes because honestly, it's more small things that I dislike and the overall aspect of things, they work really well and I have no complaints about them because it works great. I've had no issues with them. It just makes my likes that much easier because I don't have to truly worry about them because they work all the time and if something happened, and then, you know, depending on what it is, it normally just becomes a little bit of a frustration. Well guys, those are my likes, dislikes, and my opinion on my Jeep. As you guys, you know, will have concluded from this video, I love my Jeep. 
I like a lot of things about my Jeep, you know, from the front to aspects in the back to the inside. And there are those things that I dislike about my Jeep. And some of them are common Jeep JL things and others are just things that I personally dislike or have found issue with that has just turned me to massively disliking them. So let me know about what you dislike and like about your rig, whether it's a Jeep or whatever you use, and leave it in the comments section below, guys. Thank you for joining me out here today. It's been a gorgeous day. I've had a fun time talking with you guys about my Jeep. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. 98% of everybody that watches isn't subscribed, and we have a goal of hitting 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, guys. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out immensely. Also, the journey doesn't end here. If you haven't checked out some of our other social media platforms, links are in the description below. Go ahead, click on them, check them out. If you'd like to help me along on my journeys and my adventures, there is a link to the Patreon page down below. You'll find many different things on Patreon. Go ahead, anything that you guys would like to donate is greatly appreciated. It does help me with my adventures and being able to fund, especially for gas, with the way gas prices is, because I didn't buy this for gas mileage <laughs> and honestly she likes to drink fuel just not as much as like the 392 but she still drinks fuel so that does help especially going to pay for gas and i greatly appreciate it guys so thank you guys for joining me and i will catch you all next time out on the trail